with Nosy by FPV. This is a request by Mike Ryan, one of my subscribers. He wanted me to do a bit of a look into the Beluga. I've mentioned it a couple of times in some of my videos. So, let's give him a quick look. So, Beluga 552, Beast Class. First things first, arm thickness, nearly 20 mil there with top and bottom plate. You've got a double stacked arm, very thick, very chunky, high quality carbon, M4 12.9 high tinsile bolt, the three others. The arms meet together in the centre, so they bolster up against each other. Camera side plates in there, sit beautifully. Precision cut carbon. I've, uh, I've beefed up the standoffs, but uh, yeah, you could talk about this for a long time, but I'm going to try and keep it frame. So we're taking 30 by 30 motor mounts, full X-Class size. There's a lot of room in there for any flight controller. We'll take a DJI Air unit, no problems. I've got nine big capacitors in there. She is a beast. APD 500 PDB. 500 amp, got the Natec H743, so we're rocking all the tech on the flight controller, in there is a TBS Unify Pro 32HV 1 watt plus VTX with Crossfire Nano Diversity, one vertical antenna one horizontal out on the arm. APD 120 amp ESC with a 200 amp burst current handling. So yeah, this thing is ultra equipped. Brain FPV U blocks, double door NAS GPS. Gone for the Foxy T-Rex 1500 TVL flight cam, GoPro nasty mount, 7 black, right hand circular polarised, true RC, Kevlar matchstick, this antenna is the true RC bad pole, flat planar bazooka or ultra range with the crossfire. This thing is weighing over three kilos. I reckon it's near three and a half. 4215, 520kV Brother Hobby T7. Aeronaut cam carbon power. Aggressive pitch props. I do like a bi -blurred. You lose a little bit of bottom end thrust, but you gain much more top end speed with the bi blade. Jesus, my arm is aching now. <clears throat> the carbon that Stefan uses is very nicely designed, very nicely cut. You've got a bolt there, a bolt there, and a bolt there. And that's clamping your stacked arms together, making for a very substantial base class frame. If you didn't have a GPS on the back and maybe mounted one at the back, 
you would have room for a big single if you wanted to run like 600 80 kV motors you could run a big single 6s on the back you can see I've gone for the 12s format oh god two big 6s packs there they plug in red to black black to red then red to red, black to black, and that gets you your 50.4 volts. So all in all, scope copter, standing quad designs. If you are interested, Mike, in uh, some of Stefan's frames, hop along down to scopecopter.com and have a look. He does many different types of frames some bigger and a good few smaller but I have here it has to be said created a bit of a monster I have had a test hover today so far so good but that is a serious quad My scales max out at three kilos and it's going off. So I recommend nearly 3.5 kilos. Full X class power in a more compacted setup. But uh, yeah, you, you can see the size of what we're dealing with here. And then you stick a five inch. It is a big bird. It should haul ass. And I'm looking forward to a nice day <laughs> to get it out in the field. Give it a good test. See what we're dealing with. I'm expecting to do a bit of tuning and a bit of black box studying. But uh, I'm running the new bi-directional D-Shot firmware from APD D-Shot 300 full ESC telemetry that's all configured in beta flight now and working perfectly so I get ESC temperature I get current sensing and I get voltage sensing all direct from the ESC's straight to UR8 via the PDB that's configured in the uh, battery and powers tab and in the CLI you have to type force cell count 12 for your 12s so it now recognizes the voltage as a 12s supply and gives me an average cell count so I get my total voltage and my individual cell readings so uh, yeah it is a beast it has to be said and it is it is dangerous <laughs> it's a dangerous dangerous machine this it is like a flying buzz saw see if we can get that in there look. one handed come on jam these in here look bear with me illuminates nicely the brain FPV GPS very trick but well, she is alive and well so we've just left with a bit of black box studying and a bit of tuning and we're good to go. I've got two more propellers to balance up. Just got to shave a bit more off one side of the blades. But uh, if there's any areas of the frame you want me to pay particular attention to, Mike, uh, let me know. Happy to oblige, answer any questions. 
but uh, if you do go down the skulk copter route, you absolutely will not be disappointed. I mean, look at the carbon in there. That's some serious, serious carbon. We're talking, at that point there, we've got nearly 20 millimeters of stacked carbon. And the quality of the cuts is just spot on. And the shape of the arms making for a very interesting craft if I do say so myself but yeah it's called Copter Mike give them a look if you're interested I've put a lot of time and effort into this creature now so I'm pretty sure it won't disappoint some of the components I've used mind you they're not cheap but the bigger you go, you've got to up the ante a little bit. So yeah, looking forward to a good flight with this baby. I've got some more lifers on order. When I go flying with this, I'm going to be one of the going with at least another four sets of packs. So I can get out and have a good session. This will be capable of some extreme long range flying and some high powered aqua fun. So it's, it's going to be interesting to say the least. So that kind of concludes a bit of an insight into the beluga. It is a beast. So if there's any questions you'd like answering Mike, drop me a line. Noisy boy, signing out. Yeah!